Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about an exciting new feature from OpenAI called Structured Outputs. It's a new way to make sure AI responses come in a specific format that's easy for computers to understand. And it will match exactly the JSON schema provided by the developer. So without any further delay, let's get started. Imagine asking a large language model to give you a recipe. The large language model might give you the recipe in a burger format that's hard for a computer to break down. Using structure output, you can tell the large language model to give you a recipe with clear sections for ingredients, steps, and cooking time. This will make it super easy for your app to use the information. Using structure output, we can tell the large language model what information we want and how we want to structure. This will also give us control over the type of information returned from the large language model. Now let's talk about the benefit of using structured output. First, it's reliable. The large language model will always give you the information in the format you ask for. Second, it's clear. If the large language model can't or won't answer, it tells you directly. Third, it's simple. You don't need to write complicated instruction to get the format you want. There are two main ways to use structured outputs, function calling and response format. Let's start with the response format. We use the response format when we want OpenAI to give information to us in a specific structure, like for mass tutoring app or recipe generating app that needs to show steps clearly. To use structured output, you have to use the latest version of OpenAI, which was launched on 6th of August 2024. To install, OpenAI runs the following command. To upgrade existing installation, runs the following command. And to check the version of OpenAI, runs the following command. I'm using OpenAI 1.42. Now that we have OpenAI installed, we need to set up our environment to use the API. This involves loading our API key securely. First, we need to import the necessary modules. The OS module will help us interact with our operating system, while .env will help us load environment variables from a file. Next, we will load our environment variables. This line does two things. Find underscore.env locates the .env file in our project directory and load underscore.env loads the variable from this file into our environment. The override equal true argument ensures that these variables take precedence over any existing environment variables with the same names. Now let's retrieve our OpenAI API key. This line fetches the value of the OpenAI API key. We are not storing it in a variable here for security reasons. It's best not to have your API key visible in your code. And finally, let's confirm that our API key has been loaded correctly. This line will print the API key loaded true if the key was successfully loaded, or API key loaded false if it wasn't. Remember, it's crucial to keep your API key secure. Now let's run our code cell, and the API key loaded successfully. Now that we have our environment set up, we are ready to start using OpenAI structured outputs. Let's create a recipe application using OpenAI structured outputs. This will demonstrate how we can get AI-generated content in a specific structured format that's easy for our application to use. First, we will import the necessary modules. Pydenting is a data validation library. We are importing base model, which we will use to define our data structures. Pydenting ensures that our data matches the structure we define, which is crucial when working with AI-generated content. Then we import the OpenAI client, which we will use to interact with OpenAI's API. Now let's set up our OpenAI client. This will create an instance of the OpenAI client. It will use our own API key, which we set up earlier in the environment variable, to authenticate our request to the OpenAI API. 
In the next step, we will define our data structures using Bidentic model. These will shape the output we get from the OpenAI. Here we have defined three models, an ingredient for each recipe ingredient, a step model for each step in the recipe, and finally the recipe model, which include a title, list of ingredients, list of steps, and total time. An ingredient model has two fields, item, the name of the ingredient, and amount, how much of it we need. The step model has instruction, what to do, and duration, how long it takes. And the recipe model combines these with a title, a list of ingredients, a list of steps, and the total time. By inheriting from Pay's model, these classes get automatic data validation and serialization capabilities. Now let's use OpenAI's API to generate a recipe. This is where we interact with the OpenAI API. We are using the pass method, which tells the OpenAI to return the response in a specific format. The model is GPT-40-2024-0806, which is the latest GPT model from OpenAI. Messages contain the context for the AI. The system message sets the AI role, which is you are a helpful cooking assistant, provide a recipe with ingredients and step-by-step -step instruction. And the user message is our actual request, which is give me a recipe for a simple chocolate cake. And finally, the last parameter is the response format, which is equal to recipe. We are telling the OpenAI to format its response according to our recipe class structure. Now we can then access the past recipe like this. This line extracts the past recipe from the OpenAI response. The OpenAI might return multiple choices, but we have just taken the first one. Finally, let's print our recipe in a nicely formatted way. So this section formats and prints our recipe. We start with the title, then we loop through the ingredient, printing each with a number. We do the same for the steps, including the duration for each step. Finally, we print the total time. So this code will output the recipe title, followed by a numbered list of ingredients, then a numbered list of steps with their duration. And finally, the total time. Let's run the code cell now. And there you have it. We have created a recipe application that uses OpenAI structured outputs to generate and display recipe in a constant, easy to read format. This approach ensures that OpenAI's output always matches our expected structure, making it simple to work with in our application. Structured outputs are powerful tools that makes it easier to work with large language models in your applications. It helps ensure that the large language models' responses are always in the format you can use, making your applications more reliable and easier to build. Thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.